Slight change in plan, folks. Let's finish the CNC table before I make the wood bin. Welcome back to the shop and the channel. Uh, this is an ancillary video or a side video or a, up, a, side, a sideways whatever video of the <clears throat> CNC move. I mentioned that video that I need to put drawers underneath the top of the uh, CNC table and then the electronics, which is here, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, I discovered after looking at what I need to store, I only need one drawer that was about three and a half, four inches deep. And it's got dividers. As you can see, I've already built the drawer. This is going inside the drawer. This is, I, took, I cut this on the CNC to hold all our bits, and it fits right snugly in a little pocket right here. The drawer is a standard half inch plywood box held together with pocket screws and glue with dividers for everything. So the bits are going to go in here. All the hold downs that I make will go in here, and that's for whatever. Now, this hangs down. So I was able to build everything outside of the CNC table. So, and I went a little, little pricey, a little expensive on these. I went and for this one, I put on uh, self-closing drawers, the, the fancy ones. I paid a couple extra bucks at the Lowe's for these. Okay, that's the drawer. Now, uh, the electronics. The really important part of the electronics uh, is this. This is a box that I built. And there's a video in the description of me putting this together and why I built it. What it does basically, it takes a trigger voltage from the, uh, the CNC's computer, that little cable right there. It takes a trigger voltage, which activates an electronic relay. And what that does is it turns on this outlet here turns on this outlet. What's plugged into this outlet is the router and the dust collection. So when I, when I start the G-code file on the CNC, it sends the trigger voltage which starts everything. And when the uh, machine is finished, it shuts off, shuts this off. Um, look at the video in the description of, of how, I did the, how I did this. So that's got to go in there and that's going to operate the dust collection in the machine itself. This plug will probably go away. And this is the box with the switch. I'm going to do this a little differently. But basically what's going to happen is there's going to be a power cord going to the wall. It'll come into a, 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 a box with a, uh, 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 the switch on it. And it'll go, one will go directly to the uh, the uh, dust collector, which will be on all the time. The, uh, the, 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 the um, yeah, the, the dust collector will be on all the time. And it'll be activated by the switch from the computer. But if I throw the switch the, other, switch the other way, it will turn on the dust collector, shop vac, and we can run hose anywhere around the shop. I've ordered the hose kit unboxing when it gets in. So now I have the, the wonderful task of going over to the CNC, removing the CNC from the top, start putting it somewhere else in the shop, get stuff from down below out of there, flip that thing upside down, and put this drawer assembly in place. Yay, me! Yeah, it, that's not terribly heavy, but it's cumbersome because it's kind of weighted in a different, it's weighted on one end heavier than the other. So let me, get, let me get that set up so I can start putting this in place. Heavy lifting done, upside down, ready to go. I've placed the drawer where I want it. It's a half inch proud of back from the front because there's going to be a half inch drawer front on it that will hide the cleats and the, uh, the drawer glides. So what I'm going to do now is draw a line here on this side of this one and this side of this one. That gives me a datum to where I can drill uh, holes through the bottom here so they'll be lined up perfectly with the cleat when it cleats when I go to drill the holes and countersink the holes from the other side to hold the cleats in place. So let me take care of that.
Okay, holes drilled obviously. Now let's put the drawer back in place. See if I can clamp this thing where I want it. It's gonna be kind of fun to do that. That's up on that line. There we go, half inch. Got my half inch there. Got my half inch there. And now let's drag it out like this so I can put some clamps on it. And carefully spin it around and get the clamps on the other side, on the back. And then of course I'll check to make sure that everything is still in place where it should be. This is going to require something a little different. Um, yeah. Can I reach in there and get these clamps in there? Yeah, I think I can. Oops. I'm going to have to use a call, I think. Yeah, calls were the right call. Yeah, sorry about that. So now I want to flip this. It's all clamped in place. I want to flip it up on its side like this. Move stuff out of the way. Like so. There. Now I've got my holes here and my holes here. My alignment is still good. drawer still works. I mean, the calls are holding up the drawer a little bit, but let me double check my spacing at the front. Yep. Uh, let me see. Yep. Spacing in the front. Now I want to countersink and mount uh, some number 10 screws here and here. So let's get the screws and the countersink and do that. So I've got um, McFeely's number 10, one and a half inch screws. This is only a half inch, so I've got plenty of bite on the threads. I have a counter, counter, uh, countersink to go with it. Okay. So I'll drill those holes first, and then we'll drive in the screws. Maybe I should take that label off, too. Not that anyone's going to see it. So I'm going to drive them in. Oops, shouldn't have done that. I have my... Uh, impact driver here. I'm going into some fairly hard wood. Don't you just love variable speed tools? Okay then, put the screws I didn't use back in my new supply thingy. Um, so hopefully this is going to work now. Yeah, he said with bated breath. Uh, Square drive screws, I use them for everything. I've mentioned that before. That'll also be in the description where I get them from McFeely's. Bang, make a noise. Oh look, it even works sideways. So let's uh, put this down on the floor and take a look at it. There you go, there's a drawer in place, ready to use. Full extension, I can get everything. If you go, there you go, self-closing at the end. I'm probably gonna leave the CNC off because when I start mounting up the uh, electri electrical gear, I wanna be able to flip this around and stuff because I think I'm gonna mount the, that control box I showed you, the one I built, I think it's gonna go back here somewhere, hiding out of the way and then everything else gets wired to that through, uh, and then through the switch. I gotta work out the circuitry a little bit because it changes from what that stuff came from. That came from a sanding station I built. There's a link in the description to my building that. And I think I did a description, I think there's a link in the description when I, when I did the switch modifications on that so we could use it for um, sanding with an automatic turn on or just dust collection without, without using a sander. You know, vacuuming up around the shop. I like it. Well, there it is, um, all wired up for the uh, CNC and the dust collection. I didn't film that because it's just basically screwing boxes to wood and putting some, running some wires. 
and it looks a little more complex than it actually is. Let's take a closer look. Here you go. Uh, starts here at this quad surface mounted box which plugs into the wall. The CNC computer and the little light I use will be plugged into there. That has a power line that comes all the way over to the switch box here with a single pole double throw 120 volt 50 amp toggle switch here. And the, the, uh, the, the neutral and the hot come into the center connectors here is the switch. And then when you, when you throw the switch, it comes out of here. And you throw the switch the other way, it comes out of here. From there, it goes to this junction box. And it feeds power to this plug right here for the shop vac. When you flip up to the CNC, what it does is um, it turns, this gets turned on when the CNC runs and the power for the shop vac comes out of here down to this plug. This way, I only have to unplug the shop vac once to take it out to clean it, but I don't have to keep moving the plug back and forth. So let's do a quick demo. This is essentially how it's going to be set up and working in place when I get it over back against the wall. Got the cyclone in place. It's connected to the shop vac back here, where it should be. Um, this is the input. And of course, this will go up to the CNC when I'm doing milling in the CNC. And it go, it, we disconnect that and hook up with the long hose when we want to do some sanding in the shop somewhere. So the, sh the switch is in the center neutral position. The down is sand, the up is CNC. So when I push the button down, I get shop vac on, and this is obviously pulling air. When I put this to CNC, I get nothing. You need a trigger voltage. Well, I've rigged up a 12 volt trigger voltage. So it works either way now. Uh, that's the reason why I have this junction box right here. Now I want to mount the uh, computer in a, a location that's easy to get to, but kind of out of the way and get it back on the ground so I can continue on with other projects in the shop. Rebuild. And the computer's right here. I built a small box with a stop in it. The, the computer slides in there. The XYZ axis control cables are here. The uh, trigger voltage cable is here and here's the power for it. This is the cable that goes to the control box, touchscreen control box. I strain relieved it here and strain relieved it here so it doesn't put any strain or load on the connectors themselves. And this just dangles free. Um, power on. Power off. Finished up the wiring underneath. I tried to make it as neat as I could, but you know, it's a little tight. So this is the power supply for the computer plugged in here. This is the little light I'm going to show you in a second that I use for uh, when I'm setting up the uh, cutter and all that. This is the power cord for the uh, router. So, and this obviously is the power cord for the trigger voltage I showed you early, which runs back over here to the computer. So when you turn on the G code, you just get the trigger voltage. And as I demonstrated, both of these come on and it turns on the router and it turns on the uh, shop vac, which is not in here right now. This is a task light I was telling you about. It's a little LED you know, wand light, so you can see what you're doing, getting the machine lined up and all that. And it comes with these little stick-on metal plates so I can mag magnetically stick it anywhere. This is phenolic. This is not metal. And I also used another one up here for the wrench for the router collet, which is a precision collet. Uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to put links in the description to everything to call it the light, the whole nine yards. I showed earlier the controller. The only really messy thing in the controller is the um, touch plate. Use this to calibrate the uh, vertical axis on the router or the uh, Z axis up and down. And th th this is kind of, you know, I haven't got a place to put it. It just sits down here for now until I need it. Connected to the computer, little magnet to connect it to the router. Now, the dust collection, everybody surmises, is pretty simple. Basically, one end of the hose goes into the, the, the mullet. The other end of the hose goes into this little 90-degree, uh, smooth 90-degree elbow I have into the dust collection at the router. And this is flexible enough, so I've got um, basically a nice service loop, as it were. That's as far back. 
So I can I can run this back and forth and everything's this is never going to pop out. It's just the right size. Now, for doing the sanding, I know I promised an unboxing, but there's no unboxing. I just opened it up and started using it. This is that hose from Rockler that goes out 12 feet. It's their newest iteration of this kit. It comes with these um, little rubber connector things that go on your, on your tools. And uh, the nice thing about it is this clips together like that. So it doesn't come apart. And then you just squeeze it and you can take it apart. You're not worried about, uh, you know, finding connectors or squeezing things on or whatever. You leave this part permanently on your tool and you just connect when you want. Now, for dress collection, there is one little thing I've discovered, and I have to work this out in the circuitry. The only thing you have to do when you're doing dust collection, other than disconnect this hose and connect this hose, because of the way I've got it wired, I'm going to have to find a way to change that. You have to turn off the router, but just turn on the, the sand. And with that, you can go around the shop or just set up a bench right here, whatever. Uh, example of the, um, of the tool connected is this is the, obviously the Ryobi random orbital sander. And this clicks right in here like that. And it pivots. And when you're done, just disconnects. So that's essentially it. The CNC is done. I can now go and finally build the wood bin. And until next time, make great things out of wood. Always.